a real bird eye view. But from what I could observe, there was a there was a small call uh, group of ministers who were in charge. But the person I saw who was over in, in charge was the head of public service, Francis Madara. Because he also had access to the president, which at that time was very limited. In fact, at that time, I think he was the only one who had access to the president. Then there were others like the Christopher Mulungaro, who was the security minister, Kiraito Mulungi, there was David Miraria, who was the finance minister. But it was a very small group. Okay. Yeah, because we had. Uh, People coming to State House was kind of discouraged. So people normally met at around the house. Mr. Modora used to come to, come to State House, actually on a daily basis. And then there was obviously there was a controller of State House, uh, Terry Gray, who played a big role in those early, early days. But it was, it, was a, it was a very difficult time because. When you have an incoming president who is indisposed, it kind of takes the wind yeah, out of the yeah. yes. With a president indisposed, you know, it's like there was a vacuum, but not a vacuum because the president is there. Uh, so there was a lot of, I think, what you call petty infighting within the government. Yes. When I, when I would think, and other Kenyans would think, that now that NAC was in power, the duty of whoever was there was to get down and do the job. People had been assigned duties as ministers and other things. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. Um, a bit. Yeah. Before the Mark government came into, into, into power. Yes. There was a strong desire amongst the majority of Kenyans to change the country. That is how NAC became a political juggernaut. After years of common misrule, yes. Kenyans wanted a fresh beginning. So the expectation that, yes, the president has been injured, yes, the president has been thrown in, there's a new government in place. Now, as the president recuperates, let the, gov the government should get down to work. Because there's a lot of work to be done. Like I said, everybody had been assigned their duties. Some were ministers, some were PSCs, some were ambassadors. So, I think the, the, the least Kenyans expected was there to be any kind of uh, infighting or disagreements as to who was to do what. People's roles were clearly uh, spelled out. But to answer your question, yes, I do believe um, if my father had not had that accident, yes. I think the history of Kenya would have been very different because then there would have been more unity in the country. And uh, of course, during his presidency, obviously, he would have gone to achieve even greater things than he achieved. Um, you know, at that time, he was a real uni unifying factor. Because don't forget, even NAC, NAC at that time was made up of very different, very different and disparate components. Yes. But he was a unifying factor. Politically also, and in terms of seniority, he was a head, on, head and shoulders above the rest. If they had remained, if they had been more focused, I think uh, things would have been very different. Because mm -hmm. the whole idea was to correct the wrongs of Kano. That was, that was the whole idea behind him. And, and that, that is what Kenya wanted. Mm -hmm. And that is why you find when Mzee became president, he put politics aside and he went down to work. Because Kenyans wanted the economy fixed. That's why they elected him. That's exactly what he did. So that 10 years later, when he was retired, the economy was doing very well. But Kenyans got to appreciate how well the economy did in those 10 years after he had retired. They, 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 they were even saying, we wish he could have gone on for another 10 years. So focus, that is the key. So that uh, the accident... Um... See, six months is a long time in politics. So by the time he had fully recuperated, which was now actually around December 2003, January 2004, which is actually one year after the accident, uh, you know, you 
a lot of bad feelings in yeah. certain quarters in the government, which would not have been there if people had taken a more focused approach. But with the president being indisposed, we are here to help him run the country, not to look over our shoulder who, is, who has more power than me or who is doing what. Did he wake up to some surprises in his own government? Like certain changes have been done without proper consultation? No, no, no. You know, there, there are no... One thing I must say about uh, Francis Madara, who, as you know, in a country like Kenya, the way the government is set up, it is the head of public service who runs the government on a day to day basis. He was totally loyal uh, to the president and exceedingly powerful. And the whole beauty of both being a civil servant is that you are not beholden to anybody. You are only beholden to the president. So the president gave him the directions to do and he did that. Was it and, 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 and many people did not realize that what Francis Navarro was doing at that time and even subsequently. Obviously those are instructions from the president. You cannot purport to think on behalf of the president if he is not well enough to see you, then whatever decisions have to be made, unless of course it's an emergency, we have to wait for the following day. I remember